Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is absolutely having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. And I hope everyone is absolutely safe and well around the world with this COVID-19 pandemic currently going on. I actually wanna know where all of you guys are from. If you guys are in the US, comment below if you guys are in the US. Um, if you guys are from Canada, UK, Australia, anywhere really in the world, comment below where you guys are from. I really, really wanna know. Anyway guys, excuse the hair. I'm currently not able to go to the barber shop because everything is really closed. So I am wearing this little piece right here. Um, anyway, today's video is gonna be a Q&A. I asked everyone on my Facebook group, uh, Ecom Masterminds. By the way, if you guys aren't already in the Facebook group, please do join below. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Um, and I asked you guys, you know, what questions do you want me to answer for you guys? You know, it can be literally anything across e-commerce. So today I have 10 amazing questions for you guys. You know, anything from advertising to, you know, product description to, you know, some personal questions about myself, my journey about dropshipping, you know, so it's really everything across the spectrum of e-commerce. So, you know, I'm gonna basically keep this video as raw as possible for you guys, you know, get as much information, you know, as you can out of this video. And by the way, if you do have any questions, please do comment them below, and I will be sure to answer them as well. So guys, with that being said, before we go into it, please do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and join the family. So the first question we have, and I do have my laptop right here, by the way, if you're guessing where I'm looking, um, is how long do I have after a product to advertise it before it's saturated, right? So basically what this person is asking is after you've done your product research, after you're done your product validation, right? And you have a product and, you know, how long do you basically have, you know, before it's saturated, right? Or before it's too late or before there's a lot of market awareness for that product. So first of all, you know, when you're doing your due diligence, when you're doing your research and validation, you know, you don't want to have too much of a gap from, from, from that period to kind of setting up your ads, right? You don't want like two or three or four weeks, you know, maybe a week at the max is okay, but you should be basically utilizing that time frame as if, as efficiently as possible, you know, to set up your product page, right? To make sure your funnel is okay, um, to make sure you have your ad creatives down, you know, your social medias are good, um, to figure out what kind of marketing angle you're going to be taking for that product, right? Because it's kind of in it. It's again, it's kind of inevitable that more and more people will start to kind of hop on that product. Um, so, you know, you kind of want to limit that time frame as much as possible, right? You want to make sure everything is in order, everything is good. Um, you know, again, there's no really right or wrong time frame as to, you know, how long you have until a product will be saturated. But again, just to be safe, you don't want to kind of take more than a week to get everything together. You know, like I said, the product page, the ad creatives, kind of figuring out the marketing angles, you know, setting up your upsell, setting up all the back end stuff like email marketing, uh, you know, abandoned checkouts, SMS tech uh, checkouts, all that good stuff, basically, right? So that's that. Um, the second question is, what is the best way to structure and set up multiple ad accounts? So that is a little bit of a vague question, but I'm still going to answer it. So um, basically, a ad account is hosted within a business manager, all right? You can have multiple ad accounts in a business manager. Uh, for example, I have three business managers and each business managers, I have at least five to seven ad accounts. Uh, some of them are for my clients. Some of them are, you know, my own stores or, or actually most of them are my own stores. Uh, some of them are for my personal branding, uh, you know, for my services and stuff like that, for like infographics and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the structure works. Um, what is the best way? There's no really best way. Um, if you guys want to actually segment your ad account into multiple pixels, I actually recommend an app called Trackify. It basically has a pure and a more accurate uh, kind of KPI representation because sometimes your Facebook ads manager uh, does misfire. I mean, well, your pixel does misfire, it, it glitches. So again, your Facebook ads uh, account may not have an accurate representation, you know, of all the KPIs and metrics and data points, right? That kind of dashboard, if you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, uh, Trackify is absolutely a great app to make sure everything's up to par and also to kind of, uh, you know, segment certain aspects of the pixels as well. So that's kind of what I really, really do recommend. The next question we have is, 
What if I found a good product that ships from the US, but the price is high, should I still increase 3X? So um, what I recommend, especially for those of you guys that are just starting out, is when you're first selling any product, right? You wanna make sure that you're building or you're establishing or you're proving, I should say, the proof of concept, right? So meaning that product is selling, that product is worth selling continuously, and it's worth actually scaling. So if you're starting from AliExpress, I think that's completely okay in the get-go, as long as you know, you're know you not having shipping times that are two or three or four months. You know, maybe 10 to 20 days are fine. You know, you can again ca contact your supplier, you can filter out by US and stuff like that. Um, and then once you have you know, some consistency, some traction, you can order a bulk of those products to a fulfillment center in the US. Um, I know a fulfillment center that I use for my Valentine's Day store that basically, I think it costs like two or 250. I think it's $2 for United States shipping. And I think it's 275 if I remember for uh, worldwide shipping, right? Uh, two to five day shipping. So that's kind of what you can do as well. And then in terms of the 3X, the margins, any product you want at least a minimum of a two or 3X increase. That's kind of rule of thumb in drop shipping. Any product that you can't at least you know, sell more than two or three X, you kind of really shouldn't sell. You know, you want to make sure that you're going to count transactional fees, costs of goods and services, and also your Facebook ad spend, which is going to be one of your biggest spends or one of your biggest costs, I should say. The next question we have is, I want to run a video ad targeting the United States with the budget of seven dollars daily will it bring customers to my store can i get three customers daily so again i'm not sure how um accurate or how kind of intentful that question was when it says seven dollars a day does it doesn't mean like only seven dollars a day spread out all the ad sets or does it just mean like seven dollar per ad set so i'm kind of going to answer uh basically both and give my input on kind of both parts of that question too because uh, that is a little bit unclear so Yes, you can run a video ad. You should be running video ads to any product uh, that isn't as self-explanatory, right? Any product that basically has to further define its you know, features, its benefits, its end result, right? You should be definitely selling to the US. I personally uh, prefer running ads to the big five if it comes to Facebook ads. That's, again, my bread and butter. For those of you guys that don't know me, uh, you know, United States, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada, right? Um, and with a budget of $7 daily. So you can, you know, set up, you can start to test and launch a product with five, between five to 15 access, depending on your budget at $7 a day. You know, I wouldn't say $7 daily in general. That's really nothing. Remember guys, any sort of paid marketing platform, it's a bidding war. $7 daily is really not going to get you anything. Maybe like three to six to seven years ago on Facebook, uh, but really not anymore. So yes, you can do $7 ad sets and it can bring you three customers or more daily, you know, depending on kind of your front end metrics in the first 24 to 72 hours. It really, really depends. And obviously how good the product is, how good your offers, all that stuff really, really obviously has to make sense. Um, but yes, yeah, $7 a day only or $10 or $15 a day only will not really you know, get you anywhere, guys, you know, just to be honest. So yes, $7 ad sets or $5 ad sets. Um, again, I don't even recommend five. I recommend seven at least to kind of get above that bit or ahead of that curve um, from other advertisers or other marketers on the platform, but not in general, not $7 a daily. Um, the fifth question is, which product description style converts the best? So this is a great, great, great question. I actually have a video on how I actually do my product descriptions and I will leave a link to that either right there or right there. Just click the little I button and it will show you a video of me actually going into my own store and setting up my product descriptions for this one product and kind of what to keep in mind, right? Kind of think out loud. But anyway, you know, different products have different product description styles. Um, the one thing that you guys should really keep in mind is when you're writing your product descriptions, um, you should really resonate with the customer, right? You should really talk and kind of connect with that customer. If, if you're selling a product in the outdoor space, you have to talk to a customer or you have to basically structure your description, I, I, I should say, right? That is really talking to that target customer, right? Someone that is really passionate about the outdoors, someone who potentially loves camping or hiking or biking, depending what your product is about. So you really have to tailor and you really have to connect that emotional feeling um, 
you know, to the actual customer, okay? And the best way to structure it is usually I have a blurb or two about what the product is, introducing it and kind of what it does. I like to use some bold words as well or some bold phrases that are very, very important. Put some emphasis on that. Um, then I like to have like an, like one picture in the middle, like a transparent picture. I like to have my features listed out in bold. Um, I like to maybe have another picture. I know some people have like tons and tons of pictures. That's very drop shipping. That's very spammy in my opinion. I keep it limited to only one or two pictures. Sometimes I'll keep no pictures and only text in the description actually, right? So that's what I'll basically do. Um, and then I'll basically have the specifications or any, any other thing that has to be added for the specific product. Um, also some products may have or may need a longer description than other products. If a product is more self-explanatory, like a accessory or something like that, then maybe a shorter description may benefit, okay? But that's kind of definitely what you wanna keep in mind in general, that you're speaking to the customer, that it's very succinct, it's very congruent. You know, you don't want like different fonts, different colors and stuff like that. Um, you know, keep it as congruent as possible, right? You keep it as minimal as possible, but you're still getting your point delivered and you're still convincing the actual customer, right? Through your actual description. Your description should just be like a bonus, right? Your ad copy and your, and kind of your landing page in general should already reel that customer in, but that description is just to kind of make sure or ensure that, oh wow, this product is actually for me, you know, from the customer standpoint. Next question is, how long did it take you to find your first winning product and in what niche was it? So it took me actually about four and a half to five months. I went through like 15 or 16 products um, to find my first winning product. And that it was actually in the outdoors niche. Um, it was actually like a heated vest. It was a little bit different than the ones that trend uh, every single winter. I'm pretty sure you guys know which one I'm talking about. Um, I'll put a picture somewhere right here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But this was a little bit different. This isn't available on AliExpress or anything anymore, but basically the same concept, right? Even now, kind of what mentality I have is that even though, you know, I've been through a lot, I've been through my ups and downs and, you know, more ups recently than downs, fortunately, I always keep a beginner's mentality, right? I'm always kind of obsessed to learning. What I'm kind of giving away from this is that it took me so, 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 so long, but I was so stubborn and I wasn't adaptive to learning or to being coachable. Um, I always thought that what I'm doing will work, what I'm doing is right. And that's why I, I kind of wasted a lot of money. I was like in $10,000 debt. I was borrowing money from my parents. I was still in college. You know, I was still paying for rent and for food and for expenses every single week, every single month. Um, so, you know, always keep a beginner's mentality, always be open to learning. You know, I just kind of wanted to throw that in there. But yes, that was my first product. It was an outdoors heated vest in the outdoor space. And I had a general knit store in the outdoor space as well. I sold that store uh, and I don't have it anymore. I sold it on the Shopify exchange platform actually. Um, how to make videos when we don't have any videos at all. So this is a great question. Um, Video or ad creative is very, very important. Not a lot of people put emphasis on it. A lot of people neglect or overlook it. Um, first of all, some good qualities for a video are, you know, make sure the video is HD. Uh, make sure the video has captions. You know, the captions don't have to be every single second, but at least kind of somewhere through the video, make sure you have your watermark or your logo on the video, you know, for authenticity purposes. And also, you know, so someone doesn't actually steal your video, right? Um, you want to also make uh, make sure it has some sort of background music, some sort of like voiceover. Um, you definitely want to have two videos to split test, at least two videos and at least two thumbnails to split test as well, okay? Um, and you wanna make sure obviously the pic, the video is as clear in HD possible, like I said. And if it's a product that needs further ex ex explanation, you wanna make sure that your video actually uses human perception, right? It actually shows someone, you know, using or utilizing or wearing or showcasing the product in some way, some shape or some form. Now to get actual video pieces, if you're a beginner and if you're just testing out, you can get video pieces from Facebook, from Google, from Instagram, kind of, clip them together and just kind of add your own unique twist touch to it like different background music different captions different color schemes and stuff like that on the actual video and going back to my old point about the supplier like i said you know once you have that proof of concept around the product you can actually order the product to your house right and you can make custom videos for it you, there's also um, different companies 
that you know have already these products in 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 house, or you can basically custom ship them the product, and they, they'll basically send the video to you. They'll shoot it in their studio or whatnot. Um, some people also just go into Facebook groups, and a lot of photographers and videographers are looking to build their portfolio. Um, so that's a great way for them to give a chance and just to kind of get you know work done for you for very cheap or you know or even free, I should say. Um, so I think custom content is very great. Facebook favors that its algorithm and its machine learning actually recognizes it. People say that Facebook will give your 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 kind of ad a higher quality of traffic to over time if you use your custom ad creative. So that's what I really, really do recommend. Um, just make sure you're not just simply copy. Like I've seen people literally download videos off of Facebook or YouTube and literally just kind of plug them in, right? Facebook requires a one by one square ratio for the thumbnail and video. I've seen just people do that from YouTube and, it, and it, look, it just looks so, so trashy. It looks so horrible, guys, right? Again, like people need quality ad creatives to be kind of, you know, reeled in now, right? Kind of what used to work before, copy and pasting different shit, excuse my language, that didn't, you know, that doesn't really just work anymore, guys. So that's what I do recommend. Is, is SEO needed for your store and is it mandatory? It's not needed and it's not mandatory so there's two different kinds of seo and i know a little bit about seo optimization which is search engine optimization uh basically how the internet or how google basically ranks your website because my agency offers it um i run a digital marketing agency called streetline media there's two different kinds of seo there's off-page seo and there's on-page seo right on-page seo is like headlines and like metadata and stuff like that like how well the text is actually on um, you know, your website, you have all the footer pages, all the, all the menu and header pages in order. Is everything, you know, properly findable, proper keywords, descriptions, and stuff like that. Um, so that is something you should definitely have optimized. Off-page SEO is like establishing, uh, like establishing backlinks and stuff like that. So that's a little bit different. Um, I only have off-page SEO done on one of my main brands, which I'm thinking of white labeling and could be the cup coming few weeks, actually very, very close. Just kind of working a few logistics out. Um, yes, right, because you want to basically make sure your your site's going to be ranked on Google, especially if it's something long term, something you want to have and build sustainable with quality revisiting and lifetime customers. Yes, then off page SEO is needed. You can get it done by an agency like mine, or you can outsource it, or you can really do it yourself. It is an extensive pop process. Off page SEO is something that is a long term return of investment. It builds up over time. All these you know, backlinks and stuff like that, um, you know, as long as they're quality, okay? So really be careful kind of who you go to. But I just don't think with the traditional dropshipping approach, especially if it's like a seasonal store, you don't really need like off-page SEO done. Our second to last question, guys, is what is the best color scheme for a Shopify store? Background, buttons, all that stuff. So this is another great question. I've seen a lot of stores that are just completely throwing me off. And why they've thrown me off is because depending on the type of store you have, right? So if you have a beauty and makeup store, um, you don't wanna make your color on your website too dark and too bold, right? You wanna, you wanna typically have them a little bit dark, uh, maybe like light maroon or pink or purple, um, whatever it really may be, right? If, if you have a outdoors niche, you know, maybe more black, navy blue, green, or something like that. So in general, you wanna make sure your website resembles the vibe of your potential customers the vibe of your niche and the vibe of your products as well, right? A lot of people have like seven, eight, nine different colors. I recommend having two to four color schemes on your entire store. And they can be slightly variants in terms of shades. You can play this around on, on your theme, um, but you know you wanna have at least two to four colors or the maximum two to four colors. This includes all buttons, all uh, you know banners and headers and footers, uh, text and all that stuff, right? Two to four color schemes is like the sweet spot. You don't want to have a whole bunch of different things. It just doesn't look professional. It looks spammy. It looks drop shippy at that point. So that's what I really recommend. Just kind of play around with it and see kind of what looks good um, and put yourself in the potential customer's shoes. That's what I always, 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 always say. Put yourself in the potential customer's shoes, always. Last but not least, guys, what are the best niches to get into in 2020 and onward? So I personally, I... I, I focus a lot on one product micro branded stores and a lot of seasonal stores. Um, right, right now it's April 11th. We have almost a month left till Mother's Day is going to launch. So I'm actually taking my Valentine's Day store. I'm starting to launch ads through influencers in the next day or two. 
uh, selling the same product, the Lux Rose Teddy Bear, by the way. Um, and then I'm going to transition into Facebook ads like a week or two later because I already have a ton of data on there, right? Um, so I do a lot of seasonal stores, but um, you know that's something that definitely you, you can do for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Halloween, all that good stuff. That's great. But if you want to, again, have something more evergreen of a niche, stuff that will always stay in demand throughout the year, you know, regardless of the holidays or, you know, the season or whatever it really may be. On the top of my head, it would be definitely travel and conveniency. It would be definitely kitchenware, like, like sanitation, cooking, uh, baking, stuff like that. Uh, definitely arts and crafts and deal, kind of do-it-yourself stuff. Uh, definitely self-improvement, yoga, kind of meditation, health, wellness, fitness. Like I know I said a lot of, a lot of like niches and general niches over there, but kind of stuff in that area. Um, I would personally not say the pet niche. It's just very, 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 very saturated. Uh, maybe like a quick one product store on like a trending pet product or something like that. But I personally wouldn't really say the pet niche. And then the fifth one would be probably outdoors. Outdoors is definitely, definitely, definitely evergreen. There's a, a twist that you can take on all these five different categories or fields of stores you guys can really get into in 2020 and onwards that will make it into a sustainable store and you would really not make it look, you know, drop shippy. So those are the five niches I recommend that are evergreen that have potential to grow this year and onwards. You know, you can sell products yearly on these different niches. That was the last question. I definitely want to do a Q&A like this maybe once a month. So if you guys have any questions, please do drop them in the comments below, okay? And I will pick out, you know, a good like 8 to 15 questions depending on what kind of topics they are based upon. For any questions, any thoughts, any concerns, please do drop them in the comments below. I really hope this was informational for you guys. I really hope this provided as much value and insight as possible. Again, guys, please do drop a like and subscribe and join the family. I hope everyone continues to stay safe in this quarantine. Uh, you know, this too shall pass over. And uh, with that being said, guys, I will check you guys out soon. Peace.